so as you just saw, that was the whole process beginning to end of not only cutting this sleeve, but also getting the chamber into this barrel to fit. So this sleeve is .734 in the chamber end of this barrel. Uh, it's 730 at the front and it's 733, 732 at the back. Now I wanted to make a little bit more room up here in the front because when I was cutting this, it's barely noticeable right there. You might be able to see it, but there is actually a crack that went completely, completely through this barrel at the chamber end right there. And so what I want is I want that whole area with that crack to fill in. Uh, I've decided to go the route of JB Weld, uh, two-part epoxy, because my favorite glue is out of stock. Uh, I really like using DevCon, and like I said, DevCon's out of stock back order with no ETA, so I'll just JB Weld it and be done with it. This, this actual barrel is going to stay in the lathe for now. Uh, I'm not going to pull this out because the drill bit is supposed to be here tomorrow. It's a 12 inch long aircraft extension 302 and then I'll drill this barrel all the way through for the barrel liner and what's going to happen is after it gets drilled I'll prep this mating surface up between the two and then I'm going to epoxy this sleeve on here and then I'm going to face off this chamber end right here after the uh, after the um, barrel insert is in there, barrel sleeve. Face that off and then start trying to figure out how to reprofile the very end of this radius right here. It's a very interesting cut and it's, it's difficult to explain the way it's done. This is more than likely done either on a horizontal mill with a shaped, uh, a, a radius cutter coming through like this. So this would be this would be in a dividing head on the horizontal mill table and it's clocked to a certain position and then a, a specialized cut uh, radius cutter on that mill uh, would, would run over and, and cut that radius profile in there and at the same time it would be turned 90 degrees or it would be sent off to another machine turn 90 degrees and then have this extractor cut put into it too. Uh, the only other way that I could see this cut being done as being done on a uh, rotary table with the head of a mill turned at a very specific angle. Is that the way that that was done? Probably not, but who knows. So yeah, that's going to be the next step is drilling this out, putting the barrel liner in, epoxying the sleeve on, facing off the chamber, and then trying to figure out how to finish cutting this radius on the very end of the barrel, and then we'll worry about cutting the relief for our new extractor which is going to be here and it's going to have to be a, uh, a a weirdly shaped extractor too but we'll get into that so that's the end of part three for now i know this one was a little bit short but this one took a lot of machine time so stay tuned for part four uh, thanks for watching and happy building